Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Technology once limited to science fiction looks more like the immediate future. Right now, the artificial intelligence industry is worth about $100 billion, and by 2023, it's expected to be 20 times that. Two trillion, yes, trillion dollars. In our special report, Artificial Advantage, ABC 57's Jordan Hatfield shows us the learning curve going forward that most will face to keep from being left behind. Thanks, Tim. AI can seem a little scary, especially when it's portrayed in science fiction films and literature as something that might take over the Earth. But other experts say it's something we might need to embrace because it's going to be the future of our jobs. Artificial intelligence. Well, what exactly is artificial intelligence? If you're anything like me, it's a term that you've likely seen on the news or read about or seen in pop culture. And usually it looks a little something like this. Bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Shall we play a game? Love to. Please list primary targets. Not exactly reassuring, is it? But fortunately for us, the reality of AI is less sci fi. Intelligence is kind of the wrong word. It, it, it can't generate its own thoughts, but it can predict answers. So it seems intelligent more than it actually is intelligent. Let's see if it can pull this up. I don't know if it's gonna work. Nick Britton is the chair of communication and world language at Lake Michigan College in Berrien County. You probably won't be surprised to learn that he's very fascinated by what AI can bring to the table. When did it first get on your radar as an educator? I'm kind of the tech guy at LMC. And so I've been sort of keeping up with, hey, this is coming out. And then it was sort of just released in the fall and my, um, some students and my own kids were saying, hey, have you checked this out yet? It was, it's available now. And so I went and checked it out. Yeah, ever since then, I've just been trying to play with it, see what, what it can do. So what can artificial intelligence be used for? Some programs are used to create pictures based on user input, which you may have seen on social media or even have experimented with yourself. Other programs like ChatGPT and Google Bard can answer questions and reply to responses. Let me create a new chat here. So I'm gonna explain to the machine, what to ChatGPT, what I want it to do. Britton told the AI bot that it was a confused college freshman and explained that he was going to give a lesson on how to write an essay. I'll give it some basic ideas, like something I would teach a class, and then it's going to play the part of somebody, a confused student, who's gonna then ask, ask me questions. This is gonna be really useful. Britton compared it to a dress rehearsal, using the questions the AI asked and helping to prepare his lesson plan to help better educate his students. And it's simple to use. All you need to do is open up ChatGPT in your web browser, and there you can pick one of their preloaded examples, or you can type in your own prompt, such as put together an itinerary for a beach day in St. Joe. And the results load in in a matter of seconds. It's programs like these that Britain believes are game changers, particularly in the field of education. For what I think the potential use for it could be the way I'm trying to promote it um, is through um, as personal tutors. Um, you can have a personal tutor for that's accessible 24 hours a day. It never gets tired, it never sleeps. It's always available to you and you can ask it questions. Britain also believes students engaging with AI can use it as a tool to even improve their writing and students have embraced it. I've used it for like study plans, so I'm studying for the CPA this summer. I've also used it, you can put in your own paper and have it like grammatically correct it. So I've also used it to do that. For most students, it's just a, a, a tool that, that gives like a push in the right direction. Like for me, it's, if there's something I'm stuck on, I can kind of use the resources available online to ask a, a quick question or two. And it's, it's like a really tailored Google search. It's not just college students. Thanks to a research study by Brainly back in January, sampling over 700 high school students in the U.S., 62.2% used AI to help understand their assignments. Nearly 40% hope to see more of it in the classroom. And when they're not using it for class... You can use it for fun. I know friends have used it even to text like their girlfriends and stuff. Britton says the uses go far beyond the classroom, such as in coding, medicine, and perhaps even reporting. It's possible that some professions will be very different in the coming years. I think that there will be a shift in the job market. I think that we will see jobs shifting. 
And some jobs that we that humans perform now will probably be outsourced to either AI or something similar. You know, like they will be automated in some fashion. Um, but I don't really fear that either, um, because there was a time when we had um, milkmen. Remember, we had good refrigeration, and the guy would bring milk to your house. And now we have refrigerators, and the milkman had to find a different job. But we don't really lament. We should get rid of our refrigerators because we need to hire milkmen. Um, you know, they they moved on. AI is already being adapted to fill in gaps left behind from the worker shortage. Business Insider reports restaurant chains like Wingstop and McDonald's are adopting AI-powered services to take orders from customers. Some have been experimenting with these AI services in the past five years. A study conducted by Yell revealed that AI's efficiency could save businesses, on average, around $35,000 per year. But locally, it's unclear what impact is being made. I've reached out to several consulting agencies to see if AI is seeing more widespread adoption in Michiana. None were willing to comment. Perhaps because the tech is too cutting edge, or out of fear of admitting jobs are being phased out. The New York Post cited a report from analytics firm Challenger Gray and Christmas that nearly 4,000 jobs were lost because of AI adoption. But even if some jobs may no longer exist, Nick Britton looks on the bright side. I think the AI will Yes, it's going to cut off some jobs, and I think it's also going to create new ones, probably that we don't even know, we don't even know what they are yet. Ultimately, AI is just a tool, one that may augment rather than replace workers. You might think about like a nail gun. You can't take a nail gun and set it next to the, some boards and say, okay, I'll have a house tomorrow. You still need a person to operate that nail gun. You still need a person to make the schematics, to make the blueprints, to put that house together. The nail gun makes the construction worker more capable, more effective. We will still always need good old-fashioned reporters and good old-fashioned educators, but their tools have changed, and this is a tool we will need to use. And for concerns about AI taking over the world? I think we're pretty safe as far as Terminator goes. Of course, the use of AI is still in its early stages, and it's currently unclear where exactly it may go as there's still plenty of debate on whether or not it should continue to be used. And as for whether or not it should be used, I think this quote by sci-fi author William Gibson is food for thought. He wrote, I think that technologies are morally neutral until we apply them. It's only then when we use them for good or evil that they become good or evil. In studio, Jordan Hatfield, ABC 57 News. And stick with Night Team this Friday for part two on the artificial advantage. ABC 57 anchor Brian Conybear digs into the concerns surrounding AI and why one expert warns it could be more dangerous than nuclear weapons.